So we were talking about the digestive system and I stopped here uh, talking about the tip. You know that uh, an adult person has 32 teeth in two arches. Now if you see the parts of a tooth, a tooth has three parts, crown, neck and root. Those are three parts of a tooth. Crown is the part that you see from outside. Then the part, middle part, which is the neck, covered by the gum. So inside the gum you will see the part which is the neck. And then the lower part is the root which is attached to the bony socket of your mandible and maxilla. So root part is inside the bones. So those are three parts. Now if you cut a tooth and see the structure of it, it has a number of structures. The outer layer of the crown, you see the picture here, the outer layer of the crown part is called the animal and that's the hardest structure in the body. white colored covering of the crown. Then under the animal you have another structure that is called dentin. Dentin is present everywhere in the crown part, neck part as well as in the root. And then innermost part is the pulp. Pulp is a soft tissue located inside the cavity. So pulp is the soft tissue inside the pulp cavity. Now, in the innermost part of the root, the pulp cavity continues as a canal. So this is the pulp cavity and inside the cavity you have the pulp where you have the blood vessels and nerves, you see that. And then the pulp cavity continues through the root as a narrow passage. That is the root canal, root canal. Why you have the root canal? Because the blood vessels and nerves enter into the pulp cavity through the root canal. So those are the structures and parts of a tooth. Now a ligament <coughs> called the periodontal ligament that connects the root to the bony socket. So that ligament helps to hold the tooth in the socket attaches the tooth to the bone. And another structure which is not present in the crown part but present in the root here, you see that is called the cementum. So cementum is a structure between the periodontal ligament and the dentin. So here the difference is, you see, in the crown part, the dentin is covered by the animal and in the root part, the dentin is covered by cementum. No animal, but the cementum is here. <clears throat> Mechanism of regulation of GI tract. When we say regulation 
of GI tract or gastrointestinal tract. Remember that indicates two things regulation of movement or contraction and regulation of secretion. You know, those are two important things that happen in your GI tract, right? Movement or contraction occurs, right? In the GI tract as well as secretion occurs inside the GI tract. So those two things are controlled by the nervous system. Now, uh, inside the GI tract, you have receptors, two types of receptors, mechanoreceptors and chemoreceptors. So mechano receptors and chemo receptors. Okay. Mechano receptors are activated by the pressure on the wall of GI tract by pressure, and chemo receptors are activated by the chemicals food molecules in the GI tract. Make sense? So, when you eat food, your stomach gets bigger or smaller? Bigger, right? So, on the wall, the pressure increases, right? On the wall. So, that will activate which receptors? What do you think? pressure, yeah. mechanoreceptors, right? By pressure. Also, the food molecules, when food enters into the stomach, food molecules are chemicals, right? So chemicals, food molecules will activate which receptors? Chemo. Chemoreceptors. Make sense? So you see, when you eat something, pressure on the wall will activate the mechanoreceptors and the food molecules will activate the chemoreceptors. Okay, make sense? So those two receptors are activated. <clears throat> so both are there in the wall of the GI tract. Now, the nerve plexus in the wall of GI tract, you have nerve plexus and two types of nerve plexuses are present in the wall. One is called myenteric plexus and another is submucosal plexus. Okay? So these are two nerve plexuses present in the wall of the GI tract. If this is the cross section of your GI tract, you have two nerve plexuses, network of nerves. One is the submucosal, in submucosal layer, another in the muscle, that is the myenteric. Myo means muscle, okay? So two nerve plexuses are present. And two different types of receptors are present that I have already talked about the mechanoreceptors and chemoreceptors, okay? And these two components are very important for the regulation of contraction and secretion. Which two components? The receptors, two types of receptors, mechano and chemo, and nerve plexuses, nerve plexuses, okay? to control the contraction and secretion. Now, two types of reflexes occur in the GI tract. Short reflex and long reflex. This is easy to understand. You see, again, this is the wall of your GI tract. This is the lumen, okay? And here, you know, inside the 
stomach for example this is stomach stomach you have glands gastric gland right you know that gastric gland in the wall of GI tract okay now what happens you see when you eat food the stomach gets bigger that pressure activates the mechanoreceptors and the food molecules activate the chemoreceptors so the receptors get activated and from the receptor neuron you see this is a neuron axon you know axon terminal right this is another neuron this is the axon okay so the neuron will receive the signal from the receptors and will activate the other recept uh, neurons and this neuron for example will they are connected like this and stimulate the glands here so the neuron will send signal to the glands through other neurons like form a network here and everything is happening here in the wall of the GI tract inside the wall of the GI tract these neurons are being activated and they are stimulating the glands to secrete the HCL in this case okay now that is called short reflex short reflex okay and also these neurons will contract the muscles in the wall of the stomach so contraction will occur so two things will happen the neurons will stimulate the glands to secrete the chemicals inside the lumen and will contract the muscle fibers to cause the contraction of the stomach okay so secretion from the glands and contraction of the muscle contraction of the muscle but here everything is happening in the wall now another thing can happen when the stomach gets bigger the mechanoreceptors are activated and food stimulate the chemoreceptors and from this neuron the signal can go to the brain Okay. and then from there the signal can come to stimulate the neurons here so you see in this case the signal is getting out from the stomach or GI tract to the central nervous system and then coming back to stimulate the neurons and that will cause the secretion and contraction same thing will happen the result is same so this is called the long reflex because it is going to the central nervous system and then coming back to stimulate these neurons. So this is long reflex, makes sense. Short reflex stays within the wall of the GA tract, long reflex goes to the central nervous system, then central nervous system sends signal back to the wall of the GI tract. So look at this now. This is the lumen, this is the wall, okay. So when food enters into the stomach, okay, the receptors are activated and the receptors, the genus show the receptors, will activate the, sorry, the chemoreceptors and mechanoreceptors are activated, right? And then intrinsic plexus will be activated. And that is the short reflex. Also, the signal can go to the central nervous system and then come back to cause the secretion and contraction. That is the long reflex, okay? So those are two ways the contraction and secretion are controlled. Now we'll see the wall of the GI tract. Yes? Um, so if it's got these two routes, how do you know when it's going to take a long route versus a short route? Uh, usually, if 
the you need very small amount of secretion and weak contraction you don't need the signal to get out and go to the central nervous system and come back it's like local you know weak stimulus but if you need strong contraction and lot of secretion then goes to the central nervous system then comes back but we don't really know that how much you know stimulation is needed for to activate which one uh, both can be activated at the same time okay local as well as you know the long reflex so in the wall of the gi tract everywhere you have four layers in the stomach in the small intestine in the large intestine everywhere you have how many layers four layers okay from inside to out outside if you see innermost layer is the mucosa then submucosa then muscular is external and outermost layer is called the serosa so here if i draw from inside to outside innermost layer is the mucosa so this is the mucosa then you have the submucosa then you have muscular thick muscular layer that is the mus muscular is external and outer covering is the serosa okay so like that inside to outside now remember you can write it down mucosa itself has three layers in it mucosa has three layers and muscular is external has two or three layers depends where you are looking at so mucosa has how many layers three and muscular is external this layer has two or three layers in it why i said two or three muscular is external in the stomach wall you have three layers of muscles in the muscular is external in other parts of your gi tract you have two layers okay in muscular is external so we'll see that just know that so you will keep track okay so first we'll see mucosa this part is the mucosa and this is submucosa this is muscular is external you see the red muscle and the outermost is the serosa okay now if you see the mucosa here you see 1 2 3 3 3 layers okay so we'll see what are those three layers of mucosa here innermost thin lining is the epithelium you know epithelial lining innermost then lamina propria is the middle layer and outer layer is a thin muscle you see red color here thin layer of muscle that is called muscular is mucosa that means the muscle of mucosa muscular is mucosa so mucosa has how many layers in it three what are those from inside to outside epithelium lamina propria and muscular is mucosa muscle of the mucosa then you have sub mucosa this one it is a connective tissue layer no muscle in it no epithelial tissue in it and sub mucosa has the blood vessels you can see here artery vein lymphatic vessel glands glands in sub mucosa and i mentioned one more thing do you remember i said two nerve plexuses remember that one is called myenteric plexus another is called sub mucosal plexus so that sub mucosal nerve plexus in sub mucosa that's why it is called sub mucosal nerve plexus okay so sub mucosa has a number of things you have artery vein lymphatic vessel you have nerve plexus called submucosal nerve plexus 
as well as glands. You see the glands here? It's important. Then, next layer is a thick muscular layer, thick layer of muscle, smooth muscle. And that is called muscularis externa. Now you help me. I said muscularis externa has how many layers in it? How many? Two or three, two or three right? Two or three. Only in the stomach wall you have three. Okay? In other parts of GI tract you have two. Okay? So <coughs> this is small intestine not a stomach, so you have two layers. You see one is here, here you can see more clearly. This is one, this is another. So two muscle layers. Now why two? Both are smooth muscle, but why two? Just the arrangement of the fibers. This is your small intestine, okay? So in one layer, the fibers, smooth muscle fibers are going like this, longitudinal, make sense? And another is fibers are going like this. Make sense? So now you tell me. Inner circular and outer longitudinal. You see circular and longitudinal. So this is circular layer and this is longitudinal. Along the tube is longitudinal. So this way the fibers, that is what? longitudinal and this way circular right circle make sense so now you tell me you guys if I want to constrict the lumen okay you know lumen right constrict the lumen contraction of which fiber is needed longitudinal or circular circular if I want to make the tube shorter not constrict if I want to you, you guys, want to make shorter, which fibers should be contracted? Longitudinal, make sense? Because longitudinal fibers are going like this. Okay? So shortening will be done by the contraction of longitudinal fibers, right? And constriction of the lumen will be done by the contraction of circular fibers. Make sense? Easy. So both are needed. That's why you need two different arrangement of muscle fibers. Now, you have food bolus inside the, this is the intestine, okay? You have food bolus inside it. To move the food downwards, to move the food downwards, you have to do what? Make it short. Make sense? That will push the food down, if I, if I contract this way. Make sense? Now, if you want to break, the food bolus into pieces, you need this way, right? Make sense? So, uh, does it make sense? Okay, you guys. Hello. So, how many reflexes occur in the GI tract? Two, short and long. Why one is called short? Because it stays, stays. The long one goes where? Long one goes where? Did I draw the board? To the nervous system. To which nervous system? To the brain. To the brain. Central nervous system, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, when I say regulation of GI tract, I mean what? You, second person. Regulation of GI tract. Regulation of what? GI tract. Yes. That means what? So what I am talking about so long, I did draw on the board and spent 20 minutes. Regulation, if you don't know regulation, then how will you know the mechanism of regulation? You need to know what is what, what are regulated in GI tract. If you don't know what are regulated, no point of talking about the mechanism of regulation that I explained it, right? So two things should be regulated in GI tract. What are those two things? I thought you were taking note in your cell phone. I right? do, until like... The last day? Okay. 
So regulation of what? Regulation of contraction and regulation of secretion, right? Those two things are regulated in the GI tract. Okay. Uh, so how many layers in the wall? How many words, uh, layers in the wall? Four. Four layers, right? Mucosa? Submucosa, muscular is external, and outermost is called the serosa, right? And mucosa has how many layers in it? Three. And muscular is external has how many layers? You? Two or three. Where you have three? Stomach. In other parts, you have two, okay? So, since this is small intestine, it has two, right? Inner, circular, and outer longitudinal. Make sense? And I have also explained that which one should be used for hot purpose, right? To constrict the lumen, you have to use which one? The circular one. That makes sense, right? And to make the tube shorter, we need to contract the longitudinal fibers, okay? Both are important. Okay. <coughs> Okay, I also uh, mentioned that in the wall of GI tract, you have two nerve plexuses, submucosal plexus and myenteric plexus. Remember, submucosal plexus, its uh, name is submucosal plexus, so it should be in the submucosa. Myenteric, myo means muscle, so it should be in the muscularized layer, muscularized external, okay? Uh, now look at this, everyone. This is some because I showed you. Is there any muscle here? No muscle, right? But you have glands, right? So some because of now not plexus will cause what? Secretion from the glands. Make sense? This is muscular is external, muscular layer, where you have the myenteric nerve plexus. So muscle will do what? Secretion or contraction? Contraction, right? So myenteric nerve plexus is for contraction, right? And submucosal nerve plexus is for what? Secretion. Is it clear? Okay. <coughs> so here, uh, uh, those two plexuses. Now, uh, the nerve fibers in the wall of GI tract is autonomic nervous system, sympathetic and parasympathetic. You know already those are two divisions of autonomic nervous system. Sympathetic stimulation, this is important here, inhibit secretion and motility. In other parts of the body, usually sympathetic activation does what? Activate contraction. Like on heart, sympathetic activation will increase the force of contraction, right? But in this case, it is opposite. It inhibits the secretion and motility. Parasympathetic impulses or activation increase the secretion and motility. So this is kind of opposite than other parts of the body. Okay? Movements in the GI tract. In the GI tract, actually three types of movements occur. One is called peristalsis. I'll explain you that one. Peristalsis. Another is called segmentation. And third one is called pendular. Not all books list this one. Uh, many many places only you will see these two, but some books uh, also mention pendula. Now, what is peristalsis? This is the intestine. Okay. Now, if I see the food bolus, this is the food bolus. What happens? 
food is moving this way, okay? So contraction occurs here in the wall, the back of the food. And relaxation occurs in this part. So the back of the food, when contraction occurs, it pushes the slippery food bolus. It is slippery, right? So it will push the food forward, makes sense? Downwards, actually, because intestine is taking the food down, right? So we'll move downwards. And relaxation of this side, the other end, would help the move food to easily move forward, right? So you are like pushing from the back and opening the other side more. Make sense? So it will quickly move through the tube. So that is peristalsis. Another way I can explain is if I take a tube, you know, tube, rubber tube, and put the ring inside it, okay? Put a ring inside it and hold like this in the back of the ring and push like this through. Make sense? So that is peristalsis. So wave going like this and then another wave is coming after that, another wave is com coming after that, right? So one after another, wave-like movement is going like this to move the food down, okay? So that is peristalsis. Now segmentation is, this is the intestine, okay? This is the food bolus. Segmentation is the movement in which multiple contraction, uh, contraction occurs at multiple locations at the same time. So contraction will occur here, 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 at the same time. So at multiple locations, contraction will occur at the same time. So that will break the food bolus into pieces like this. Okay, so that is the segmentation. It's not wave-like movement, it's like doing like this. Look at me, doing like this, relax, like this, relax, okay? So that is segmentation. So these are two powerful movements occur in the wall of GI tract to move the food downwards as well as to break the bolus into pieces. Now, pendular movement, I believe you remember from last class, this is the abdominal cavity. You remember the parietal peritoneum goes in like this. This is called what, anybody? Remember this part? Mesenteric. Remember that? So, and then you have the stomach or liver here, like this. So, now you see, I told you in last class that mesentery works like a rope. It is hanging the organs and keeping them in right location. So, by mesentery, what happens, it's like, you know, you are uh, hanging something like this in the abdominal cavity, right? So, this is <coughs> pendular movement. The organs can move like this. Like if you, if you uh, use a rope to hang something like this, right? It can move like this. That's the pendular movement uh, that also occurs, but that doesn't have much function, uh, but that also occurs in the J tract. By mesentery, like a pendulum. Okay. <clears throat> now we'll see the esophagus, which is a flat muscular tube from the laryngopharynx to the stomach. So it takes food from the pharynx to the stomach. It's a narrow, flat, muscular tube. And esophagus pierces the diaphragm, passes through the diaphragm. So upper part of the esophagus is in the thoracic cavity and lower part is in the abdominal cavity, right? 
Now, where the esophagus? This is the esophagus, okay? And this is the diaphragm. So it goes through the diaphragm like this. And this opening in the diaphragm for the esophagus is called hiatus. Hiatus, okay? That opening in the diaphragm. Okay? And then you have the stomach here. So this is the stomach and duodenum, the other parts, okay? Now, uh, sometimes what can happen, this opening can get bigger. Like this. Opening can get bigger and a part of the stomach can pop out. Pop up like that. Through that big opening. And that is called hiatal hernia. Hiatal hernia. Okay. So, uh, that is a condition that happens. Uh, now, if you see the wall of the esophagus, it has four layers. I said everywhere you have four layers in GI tract, but one thing you remember, the outermost layer of the esophagus is not called serosa, instead it, it is called adventitia. The name is different. Structure. Uh, is very similar connective tissue structure but in case of only esophagus the outermost layer is not serosa but adventitia okay other layers are same name from inside to outside four layers mucosa submucosa muscular is external and outer most is the adventitia not serosa now another thing is uh, important in esophagus, the upper part of the esophagus is a skeletal muscle. Middle part is mixed. That means you have a skeletal as well as smooth muscle. And lower part of the esophagus is smooth muscle. Okay? So, Upper part, if you divide into three parts, one third, one third, one third, uppermost part is what? Skeletal muscle, right? And middle part is mixed and lower part, smooth. So, you know, skeletal muscle is voluntary, right? Skeletal muscle, we can control. So, upper part is voluntary and lower part is involuntary. Why? What do you think? Is there any advantage of having upper part of the esophagus voluntary? Swallow. Swallow. Yeah. You swallow voluntarily, right? First. Then lower part, when food goes in the lower part, it will go by itself. You don't control anymore. But first part, you control, right? You push the food into the pharynx, then goes to the upper part of the esophagus. Then you don't care. So that's why having you can you can bring the food back from the upper part of the esophagus, okay? But you cannot do anything if it enters into the lower part and is stopped. Okay, you cannot bring it back unless you do vom vomiting, okay? So esophagus is both skeletal and small. Deglutition. Deglutition is another name of swallowing of food. So deglutition is swallowing. Now, deglutition is helped by the tongue. Tongue initiates the deglutition, okay, for swallowing. You know that. After you make the food bolus in the mouth, you push the food backwards using the tongue, right? Because food is slippery, the bolus easily enters into the pharynx. 22 muscle groups help to move the tongue and swallow it, okay? 
Now, uh, the deglutition or swallowing has two phases. I already mentioned, kind of, I have already mentioned. First part is voluntary or involuntary? Voluntary, right? If you decide, no, I will not, you know, swallow, you can keep it in the mouth, right? So it's all voluntary, you decide, okay? But once the food enters into the esophagus, the lower part of the esophagus, you have no control, okay? So that part is what? Involuntary, okay? So normally what we do, we only, you know, push the food towards the pharynx voluntarily. Then we don't care. We know that it will go by itself to the stomach, right? We don't need to think that is it going to the stomach, it will, you know that it will go to the stomach, right? So only what we do from the mouth, we push the food to the pharynx, right? So that is the buccal phase. Makes sense. In the mouth. That part is voluntary. And the involuntary part is the pharyngeal esophageal phase or pharyngoesophageal phase. Now you see a little bit, you know, uh, contrast what I said before and I'm saying now. Did you notice that? I Before I said that from the pharynx, you can also bring the food back, right? But we don't do normal. This is what we do normal, okay? We push the food from the mouth voluntarily, right? And then rest part happens by itself, okay? So voluntary part is only what you do uh, in the mouth push the food backwards. Now, you see here, deglutition, the front part of the tongue, you push against the palate. This is the heart palate, you know. This is the food bolus. So, we push the front part of the tongue against the heart palate. That will push the slippery food bolus towards the pharynx. This is the pharynx, okay? And this is the uvula. You remember soft palate and uvula? will move up and food bolus will enter into the pharynx. So now you see here, the uvula has moved up to close this opening. So food will not go into the nasal cavity, will only go downwards. Make sense? So it is very important that uvula moves up to close that, you know, passes. So food will not go into the nasal cavity, will stop and food will only move towards the uh, uh, downwards. Okay, now, here you see another thing. When you start swallowing, the uvula moves up, but this is the upper end of the esophagus. It is constricted here, kind of closed. But when the food will enter here, in the pharynx part, you see that opening, uh, that, that, that so upper esophageal sphincter opens. So the food bolus will enter into the esophagus. Now let's see here. When the food bolus internally enters into the esophagus, this upper esophageal sphincter gets closed again. Make sense? So it will let the food get in, but after that it will get constricted again. Why? So food will only go downwards, right? That's the goal, remember. Goal is what? Food bolus goes only downwards. If that remains open, open, then food bolus can come out again, right? Into the mouth, you don't want it. So it will let the food bolus get in, but not out. Okay, now let's see what happens in the stomach. So by peristalsis, food bolus quickly moves down to the Okay. The movement is here peristalsis that I explained you before. When peristalsis occurs, this sphincter, lower esophageal sphincter, is closed. Only this will open when food comes very close to it. Now look next one. Here you see this one got opened. So food bolus will enter into the stomach. <coughs> So that is the swallowing or deglutition. Okay. 
Uh, now we'll talk about the stomach. After the esophagus, next is the stomach. Stomach is very dilated part of the GI tract. It's very expanded, wide. So the stomach mainly uh, 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 does two things. One is uh, digestion by ga uh, gastric secretion, you know that HCl, hydrochloric acid, and storage, storage, storage of food. So these are two main functions of the stomach, digestion and storage. <clears throat> Lot of secretion occurs in the stomach. So it's the food bolus is semi-solid. When the food bolus enters into the stomach, a lot of secretion occurs. So the food molecules get you know mixed with the liquid, and that is called chyme. So now the food is liquid in liquid form. Okay, no more semi-solid.